Hey friends, I'm Prairie Vintage. My name is Linda and I have a tarot and oracle haul. Wanted to share my cards with you guys. I'm super excited. I bought them yesterday, but I was just way too um, exhausted to do a video. But we'll take a look at these cards together. I'm super excited. So first cards here, Sun and Moon Tarot. Now, every time I go into this shop, it is the preferred perch in Winnipeg, by the way. Love those ladies. Um, I see this deck and I just always pick it up and then I always put it back. I don't know why. I think it's also on my Amazon list, but yeah, I just, I love the sun. It's a sun and moon tarot, so why not? And you can never have enough tarot. So this deck was 32 bucks Canadian. And let's take a look. Sun and moon tarot. I think the art looks absolutely amazing. All right, so the box is small enough. No plastic. Ooh, look at that. Little sunflowers. All right. So we have a cover card. Ooh, look at the back side. About the artist. I would never figure that the back side would look like this with the art like this. Interesting. Okay, and then the booklet. Introduction to the tarot. And definition of the major arcana and the minor arcana. And that's pretty much it. All right. Look at the art. The fool. The magician. Well, it's kind of cool if you look closely. It's kind of like um, on canvas or something. It looks like it's on canvas. Aww. That's cool. Hmm. Very cute. The artwork is nice. This is the cover. I think it's the cover. No, the fool and What's that? The lovers? And the world card. The swords. Oh, cool. Defeat. Science. Utility. Page of Swords, Knight of Swords, Queen of Swords, and the King of Swords. Ooh, Cups. There, that's the Two of Cups. Very beautiful. Love, Abundance, Luxury. Wow. It's a beautiful seven of cups. Page of cups, knight of cups, and the queen and king of cups. Very cute. Wow. Hmm. Page of Cups? No, Knight of Cups. Queen of Cups. Prince. Knight of Wands. Queen of Wands. And the King of Wands. And finally, 
three pentacles. Wow, look at that. That's a beautiful card. This looks like a very good um, starter deck with the one word description up at the top here. Page, Knight, and the Queen and the King of Pentacles. Very cool. Fairly easy to shuffle. Let's pull one card. One card spirit and the collective. What do we have? Let's give it a good mix. We have we have oh the queen of cups very loving beautiful energy with the queen of cups look at that let's see what the book has to say about this queen of cups queen of cups that's wands and Water of water, emotional integrity, love and sensuality, queen of love, feminine cycles and intuition. The water and the reflections indicate spirituality as above, so below. Wow, that's beautiful. All right, well, can't wait to do a reading with these cards. Let's move on to the next deck. So yeah, this is the Sun and Moon Tarot by Vanessa Decourt. It's not going to happen. Glow in the dark tarot. Isn't that interesting? I wonder if the box glows in the dark. Let's see. <laughs> Still too bright in here. Um, yeah. So it says featuring the Rider weight Tarot. So I'm assuming this is fairly traditional, but I'm going to see what this is all made out of. That was pretty cool. Not that I ever read Tarot in the Dark, but since I pretty much have a whole bunch of Tarot, why not the Glow in the Dark Tarot? Ooh, that's cool. So yeah, the, this deck was 36 bucks, and the box is cool. Glow in the dark tarot. So just a major minor arcana definitions and introduction to tarot. And that's about it. Wow, look at the back side. It's textured. that it feels kind of like velvety almost no smells it smells like paint yeah so traditional uh, rider weight tarot but apparently it's glow in the dark let's see i don't know i'll have to let you guys know if it actually does glow in the dark but they're kind of cool i guess so it can look like black and white when you're not in the dark. They feel very weird to shuffle because of the texture. It's like um, sandpaper. <laughs> so yeah, it feels kind of gritty. Interesting. Very interesting. I'll have to let you guys know. Actually, I'm not going to like that. Put that down here. And let's pull a card for you guys from the Glow in the Dark Tarot. Wouldn't it be interesting if we got the exact same card? Let's see what we get. 
Oh yeah, sandpaper. Gritty, gritty. Spirit, can you get one card for the viewers? One card for the viewers here, please. Uh -huh. Ooh, the Ace of Swords. Truth, honesty, clarity. Hmm. The Queen of Cups is having some truths revealed. Very nice. Beautiful cards. New beginning in truth. All right. Yeah, that smells kind of like paint. So, Twin Flame Ascension, Take Me Home Oracle Deck by Dr. Harmony and art by Tatiana Hassan. So, I thought these were pretty cool. Um, let's read the back. It says, Twin Flame Ascension is a self-actualization -act process that begins when your inner soul self becomes activated through a spiritual awakening working on the twin flame ascension oracle prepares you to connect with your twin flame and align with your life purpose this take me home pathway course consists of 11 steps in the twin flame ascension journey the imaginary oh sorry the imagery and energy of the deck guides you through the rebirthing process that allows a shift in perception new insight and more fulfillment in all areas of life 55 cards so yeah let's see what this is all about hmm. yeah these were 32 bucks very cute look at the swans oh the box is nice and soft hmm Take me home pathway, 11 steps to finding true love. Wow, that was a step-by-step -step process apparently, guys. So this looks like a spread. Step one, surrender. Step two, spiritual awakening. Step three, raise your frequency. Step four, transformation. Step five, a breakthrough. Step six is immigration. Step seven is rebirth. Step eight, one with self. Step nine, harmonize. Step 10, enter your vortex. And step 11, mission accomplished. Hmm. All right. Well, everyone's journey is different. Interesting. Twin flame ascension. What do we have? Introduction to the oracle deck. Objective about the deck, how to use the deck, the spreads. It's the same process, the cards. False twin flame. Hmm. Interesting. Let's take a look at what this is all about. Wow, look at the back side. Ooh, these are pretty. I think, anyway. Yeah, take a look. I don't know what it is. Looks like uh, just artwork, I guess. Okay, let's take a look at these cards. So we have Acknowledge, Take Responsibility, Divine Order, with pa uh, Practice Patience, Awareness, Crystal Clear Vision, Trust, Ask, Listen, Allow. Just let you guys take a look. Wow, this is beautiful. Wow. These cards are really psychedelic. Wow, look at this transformation card. Battle of Head versus Heart. Interesting. It's a backside look again. Yeah. Mission accomplished. Welcome home. Fast track to ascension. Wow. 
one on. So we'll merge her. Hmm. That's cute. The white and the black squirrel. <clears throat> Masculine and feminine twin. Activate higher self, releasing lower self. Cool. Wow, these are really beautiful. Lost in the imagery. Okay, let's pull some cards here for our twin flame people and the twin flame journey. What does spirit want to share with the collective regarding their twin flame ascension journey? What's going on? Where's the collective at right now? Give it a good shuffle. Thank you, spirits. Hey, I was feeling these two. So we have, ooh, harmonize with let your light shine. Nine, nine. Wow. And healing separation, go within. Wow. Seven, seven. Let's take a look at what this has to say to us. Nine, nine. Seven, seven. Okay, let's read healing separation go within first it says fear of being alone is surfacing to help you heal abandonment wounds from multiple lifetimes feelings of rejection and not being good enough are not part of your current story the goal of your twin flame journey is to teach you that nothing is separate from you physical separation of anything or anyone is an illusion you will find what you desire when you look within this card serves as a reminder of your ability to tune into your greatest potential your soul is aligning with your heart's desires. This is where you discover your highest good, which includes your perfect life partner. Wow. Perfect life partner. That's interesting. If you're experiencing silence from your other half, use this opportunity to reconnect to a deeper version of yourself. Whether you sense their presence or not, you're always bound to your twin flame and you will find them within yourself. Detach from the idea that you cannot experience divine love without them. Find forgiveness for the pain that they have caused you and trust the process will lead you to true love for your authentic self. Wow, that's powerful. Okay, let's look at this harmonized card. Um, I think it's going to be because they go by colors. Somewhere over here. Hmm. No. Sorry guys, I'm not sure how they how they keep them separate, but let's find harmonize. Here, harmonize. Let your light shine. You are a radiant being. Your thoughts, feelings, and actions are coming into full bloom and are in alignment with your heart. Allow your magnetic presence to shine. Your inner light is attracting the right people, places, and things that will direct your path towards your higher purpose. Be mindful of staying open and not putting up shields to block your hidden potential. This card 
is reminding you to express yourself and speak your truth. This will lead you towards a life of ease and grace, a secret to discovering personal freedom. Finally, your ego has come into har harmonic balance with your heart. You trust the process and no longer take on life by yourself. You may continue to experience contrast and duality. Staying in harmonic balance is crucial when experiencing highs and lows. Learn to surf the fine line between surrender and resistance. Don't be afraid to let your light shine. Keep showing up in areas that you feel guided toward. It will be within the space that you reap the rewards that reflect your greatest potential. Holy impactful. I don't know that... Um, I don't remember all these meanings because they're so in depth. Um, yeah, but very cool. I like. Let's put this one back, and we've got two more to look at here. So we have the Star Temple Oracle by Susie Cherub. All right, it's kind of cool. I thought the cards looked pretty feminine and pretty spectacular in the back. So I'll show you in a second. Take a look at those cards here. They're pretty cool. Nice. The book is pretty neat. Star Temple Oracle. And we have Welcome to the Oracle, using your cards, spreads, and definitions of each card. Maya Maya, oh. the wing messenger, the universal midwife. Look at these cards. So they're broken out by series. Okay, wow, look at this backside. Very cool. Pion, mother of the sea goddess. I surrender to the boundless creative flow of the ocean. Maya, the ancient grandmother teacher. I am the teacher that leads with self knowledge. Wow. Oh, there's two Maya. I guess they're grouped based on the goddess, Universal Midwife, the Ruby Star. Wow. Alkion. Wow, and beautiful hair. Visionary. The Moon Star. Moonstone star. Electra. Wow. Look at that card. The Awakener. Very cool. Selena. Huh. Very cute. Beautiful. The Jade Star. Surrender. I am ready to go with self-compassion. I'm ready to let go with self-compassion. Very cute. So just me or does this lady look like Michelle Pfeiffer? Anyway. Seven Sisters. Asterope. Asterope. The visionary, that's cool. Merope. Wow. Very beautiful. Gate ways of light. Just look at this card. Infinite. I have unlimited access to the divine mind. And 
looks like Aquaman. <laughs> yeah, these are pretty cool. Um, interesting. I don't have anything kind of like it, so pretty interesting. Let's take a look at the very last one. The Empath's Oracle by Raven Digitalis and artwork by Constantine Dax. So, yeah, this looks pretty interesting. Step into a surreal world of radiant colors and affirming emotions. I thought the cards look pretty psychedelic. And this one's were $34.99. Wow, this book is ginormous. Exploring the Empath's Oracle. I think this is in color. Wow. This book is something else. Establishing emotional boundaries. Alchemizing confusion into clarity. Yeah, the book is really amazing, but I don't want to ruin the cards. Let's take a look. Oh, that's cool. I'll take a look at this box. So there are 40 cards. All right. That's the back side. Pretty cool. Establishing emotional boundaries, trusting in destiny. Realizing empathy as revolution, evolution. Oh, those are cool. Look at this. Sh shielding, protecting, and grounding. Loving the self on all levels. Wow. Mentalizing emotional impressions. These are very cool. I love the artwork. That's the book, I think. No, it's not. Offering my gifts. Mm. Can't wait to do a reading with these. Practicing daily spirituality. Releasing emotional weight. Confronting inner demons. Wow. Yes, taking a vow. That's the cover here. That's cool. Questioning the darkest thoughts. I love um, the artwork is very in line with the definitions Getting the sorrel, look at that. Mm. Very connected with these cards already. Very cool. Engaging with fears and doubts. Invoking guides, goddess, gods and guardians. Accepting the past, embracing sensuality as union. Wow, bonding with the rhythm of life. Okay, let's pull some of these. This is really cool. I really like these cards. Spirit for the collective. Okay, I'm not taking that one because we need to shuffle these a little bit better. Can we get a card or two for the collective from the Exploring the Empaths Oracle? What message does Spirit have for the collective? One more. 
10 more spirits for the collective. Thank you. All right, so what do we have? We have meditating and reflecting with the number 38 or the number 11. Okay, and then we also have sitting with sorrow, number 26. Okay, wow. Let's take a look at the meditating and reflecting, number 38. Meditating and reflecting, essential themes, taking a step back from the daily grind in order to gain perspective, remembering that spiritual balance must come before all else, reaching and utilizing, oh, sorry, researching and utilizing practices of mindfulness in daily life, imagery. The complex image on this card represents the pure inner power we can achieve through meditation. Inner silence releases a tremendous potential and creates space for new energy and ideas. Out of this space, our lives can gain direction because limiting thoughts will not constrict our innate wisdom. Deeper meanings. There are times during which we must pull back for a little while and allow ourselves to go within. Sometimes we must simply cut ourselves a break. Hmm. All right. Meditation has a different meaning to everyone. All cultures and spiritual paths embrace some type of meditation and reflection to connect the individual with the divine. There are innumerable methods of meditation. It does not merely involve sitting in silence, although it certainly can. Because everyone is wired differently, what works best for one empath might not work best for another. As empaths seeking the spiritual core within ourselves can aid in our emotional and psychological balance, especially when the going gets tough. When the mind is overwhelmed, a little break can go a long way. Meditating and reflecting on life can help invoke a sense of peace and tranquility when life's experiences seems all too much. Indeed, meditation is a much healthier response than engaging in excessive drinking, drugs, sex, video games, gambling, junk food, gossip, and other potential addictions. Mindfulness is a concept that every empath should research, and this incurred this card encourages you to do so. When we take a step back from our emotions that all too often seem to control us, we can become more full as human beings and more easily navigate the lessons we inevitably experience in life. Suggestions for action. Because the practice of meditation can take so many forms, it's essential to research different practices. Beyond that, it's wise to experiment by putting them into action. Whether it's five minutes of vis visual visualization in the morning or an hour of breath work in the evening, meditation and reflection have limitless manifestations. When planning personal time, it's worth noting that within their religions and philosophies rooted in ancient India, Hinduism, Sikhism, Buddhism, and Jainism, etc., meditation and yoga are inseparable. In fact, they are all synonymous. All meditation is yoga and all yoga is meditation. For those who don't like sitting still, a mindful walking meditation may resonate well. Simply take a walk outside and slowly experience what the world has to offer. While walking, become aware of yourself walking. Become aware of the sensory experience. In order to cultivate mindful mindfulness, you may wish to bring the experience to your body mind by thinking words that apply to what you're experiencing for example walking smelling looking mountain grass raindrop and so on this technique of walking meditation is utilized in many schools of eastern thought and within other philosophies that encourage a person to become an observer rather than merely an experiencer mm, beautiful all right sitting with sorrow number 26 well that one seems a little sad to end off this video but let's see Let's get some words of advice. Sitting with sorrow. Essential themes. Accepting sadness is part of the emotional growing process. Deciding to not become attached to heavy, dark emotional energy. Dividing personal sadness from that which has been empathically absorbed. Imagery. This painting represents beauty in sadness and the need to surrender it from time to time. Like every human emotion, there's a deeper meaning to sadness. Sorrow rains down on a figure in the picture, providing an emotional purification and the wisdom that can emerge strengthened from this condition. Deeper meanings. As you know, sadness is a powerful force for empaths to navigate. 
If left uncontrolled, this emotion manifests as anger, hopelessness, self-isolation, and a wide array of harmful behaviors that are not beneficial on the empathic journey. Perhaps the most important thing to remember when drawing this card is that emotions associated with deep sadness are real. On the flip side, the thoughts that accompany these emotions are often illusions. The mind can play tricks. It's easy to give into dark thoughts and their accompanying emotions, but this doesn't mean they are real. Just because we think it does, just because we think it does not make it real. Unrealistic thoughts and self expectations fall short when we remember that we ourselves are a spark of the divine. All these thoughts will fall away once we experience death. Death itself should be respected and should come in its natural course, not by our own hands, as tempting as this may be at times. If sorrow is experienced for long enough, it can seem like a person's natural or baseline state of being. Okay, if sorrow is experienced for long enough, it can seem like a person's natural or baseline state of being. This is fiction because our true deeper selves are pieces of God and there's no original sin. There is only original purity. This card, wow, that's a beautiful line. This card offers an allowance to take some space from others and simply experience sadness. Sitting with our emotions is a way to analyze and come to terms with them. Done with intention, we can work ourselves out of wallowing, which is an unproductive way to sit with emotion and approach it as a Approach the act as a productive, progressive healing technique. When exploring darker emotions, we must keep in mind that we are not our emotions. We are not our minds. We are not our bodies. There are individual pieces that make up the whole. The fact that we experience life through the lens of consciousness reminds us that we are spiritual and awake and that our true essence does not deserve to be controlled by any sort of emotional state. What an incredibly rare gift to experience this earth as conscious beings. Remember that this will pass. We can experience these depths, but not fall victim to them. We do not have to feel permanently attached to sorrowful emotions. We can change our lives and our outlooks on life in order to be more poignantly target emotional instability. Perhaps most importantly, it must begin by honoring ourselves, attempting to love ourselves and not selling ourselves short. This conditioning, whether social or internal, can be challenging to unlearn, but is very much possible. Wow, okay, I guess there's more. Sad days can present us with a lot of life lessons and can teach us how to make modifications in our lives so that we can enter more positive, gentle, and happy states of being. Experiencing sorrow is not a mark of weakness. It is profound opportunity to grow as empaths. This world desperately needs us, and it needs us to be as emotionally healthy as we can be, even if it's easier said than done. Suggestions for action. When sitting with sorrow, it's important to look for the origin of any given sensation. From whence does it come? Why are we experiencing the state? What triggered it and what can be adding to it? It can be helpful to handwrite about the cognitively analyze, analyze these emotions. Sorry, it can be helpful to handwrite about and cognitively analyze these emotional origins and then make a plan on how to proceed with addressing and ultimately healing these emotional manifestations. There is no harm in consulting with another trustworthy individuals, healers, counselors, friends, etc., in order to gain an outside perspective into our own emotional suffering. We are fortunate to have access to local suicide prevention hotlines and text lines. It's not necessary to actually be contemplating suicide to contact these folks. Consider seeking help from healers, therapists, counselors, and life coaches. Acknowledging inner pain is a mark of strength. And it's vitality important to become our own advocates and heal from pain, especially those pains that play on repeat in our daily lives. In the meantime, turn on some relaxing or upbeat music that you enjoy, something non-vocal or which has a positive vocal message. We all respond differently to various types of tunes. Also consider dancing by yourself or with others. Dancing releases positive endorphins. You may also consider taking a walk in Mother Nature to reconnect with your soul's essence. This important card urges you to be proactive in your empath empathic healing so that you can more profoundly influence yourself and others throughout this sacred journey. Wowzers. All right. Well, walking seems to be a common thread here. So maybe we need to go for a walk, reflect, meditate, 
confide if you are feeling low or sorrow there is lots of help around i think these cards are absolutely beautiful hopefully you guys aren't feeling down um let's enjoy our day and reflect on everything that we do have all right so thank you so much guys hopefully you guys enjoyed this i enjoyed sharing it with you guys and as usual i will rank my favorite cards in the description box we'll see you soon bye